The U.S. Treasury Secretary is in China, a visit that's aimed at improving communication and stabilizing the tense relationship between the two. Yellen's China visit it marks the second trip by a cabinet official since ties between world's top two economies, United States and China, deteriorated further earlier this year. Can Yellen play good cop and expand lines of correspondence, avoid miscommunication and widen collaboration on global economy, climate change, debt distress, among other issues? To discuss this, we have with us Colin Strong, a foreign affairs and security strategist. He is joining us live from Malaysia. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, sir, this is the second trip to Beijing by a U.S. cabinet official. What can we expect from this visit? Do you think the Treasury Secretary can help thaw the IC relations between the two? Yeah, expectations are low. Uh, we have seen how the impact of Lincoln's visit uh, has been relatively low and that we have seen also the uh, tensions you know, building up for months now since the balloon incident. Uh, I, I, I would argue that the uh, security calculations and the overwhelming the overarching uh, security architecture in the region, especially with regards to Taiwan, will be at the bigger play uh, in this in this uh, entire meeting. And that time, uh, uh, no, Yellen's visit will be mainly confined to economic matters. Uh, she has also expressed strong desires to maintain, uh, you know, the, the the stance of the U.S. in terms of the sanctions, in terms of the embargo in place, uh, and of course to to give a clear warning to Beijing that any red lines that will be crossed. Uh, with regards to you know sanctions are uh, you know providing aid and support to Russia, Ukraine, you know we will be met with you know severe retaliations, and we have seen also how the Chinese calculations in terms of the recent ban of germanium and gallium will be you know it's it's meant to send a message to the US that um, he has all the means to retaliate for in a tit for tat move, and that you know all the uh, movements by the US in terms of containment from Chips Act to sanctions in you know critical industries uh, will be met with you know. In reciprocal, uh, you know, reciprocal, uh, you know, retaliations by by Beijing, and that uh, you know, several, uh, you know, hawks in the U.S. have also argued on the, uh, you know, the the the, the significance of Ye you know, Yellen's visit as opposed to the real need for the U.S. to stand strong, knowing that Beijing is now at its weakest in terms of economic recovery, and we have seen how he has, uh, you know, felt the heat from you know the months of sanctions and embargo and the right. containment capacity by the West. That has been crippling the industries in China. Right, so we've also seen US China ties, as you mentioned, as well deteriorate, especially in the aftermath of the Chinese balloon that was shot down by the United States earlier this year. What's your assessment of the ties between the two at this point? Uh, of course, it has been at the lowest point in decades. Uh, we have seen how measures by both sides to you know to cool tensions and you know of obviously of obviously started from the US in terms of the visit. By Blinken and now in the second visit by Yellen and maybe the potential upcoming visits by uh, you know Raimondo and and you know building up to the main uh, you know meeting between Biden and President Xi uh, in in FX, uh, and this year so we have seen how the overtures have been made you know mostly from the U.S. you know in trying to send a message to China saying that look we are not here to continue and that uh, we are here to to send a message that we are here to cooperate in terms of critical cooperative uh, you know, advancement agenda, including climate change and all that. But security issues and, you know, point of contentions, especially regarding Taiwan, and of course, you know, critical resources, including rare earths, and, you know, you know tensions such as sea, all will be at, at, at the, uh, you know, bigger point of play in the playbook of both countries. And Beijing knows that the upcoming presidential election for next year, you know, will be to the disadvantage of Beijing, knowing that how both sides will come to this unity point in terms of having a more hawkish stance against China and that, you know, the time frame is closing now for President Xi and knowing that, you know, these this economic sanctions and the aftermath, the, you know, the implications of that have been squeezing uh, Chinese options. So they have, they have to retaliate, they have to move fast. And right. you can see now that the U.S. should be more strategic in terms of imposing, you know, greater advantage, you know, knowing that he has now the bigger momentum to further squeeze China and not kowtowing to the demand, to the playbook set by Beijing in terms of, you know, uh, wanting Janet, uh, Jan Janet Yellen to 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 you know to count out to the demand by Beijing to you know to remove the tariff that have been put in place by uh, President Trump before this. Uh, right, sir. Also on that note, Washington it's not supporting decoupling with China, but adopting a strategy of de-risking instead. Could you please draw out the distinction in this approach? You know, Beijing has been you know having this uh, tough stance on you know sending a warning to both the U.S. and other players of. The risk of both decoupling and de-risking, 
of course, uh, you know, Yellen's visit is, is a message also to, to, uh, to, to be sent to Beijing that uh, they are not seeking for total decoupling, knowing that the impact will be, will be disastrous for both sides. And Yellen's stand has always been clear for the past many years that she is seen as a good cop, as a good player, as a good friend by Beijing in trying to get the Biden administration to, to tone down its, its, its containment, you know, uh, the lethality against China and, you know, to do away with all these decoupling talks and you know, to, to hold back the, uh, you know, the, the push by the, by the hawks in the U.S. to have a more, you know, stronger stance against uh, Chinese, uh, you know, trade or, you know, these, these unfair practices in trade and economic uh, activities. So we have seen also how Beijing is trying to use this visit to, to you know, to, to use uh, you know, Yellen also as, as, as uh, a good platform, a good ally. To, right. to to send a message to send a message that um, Beijing really wants, uh, you know, a, a, a tone down kind of a, a level a tone down level of you know economic retaliation by the by the U.S. Seeing that how China is facing the heat now in terms of the economic impact, so this is a critical play point. This is critical junctions and crossroads where the U.S. will need to really either step up its game, or you know to 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 crumble under the expectations of the need to ensure that ties remain open. Uh, there's a need to you know to cool tensions and by doing that it will be at risk of further being at the orbit of you know chinese economic agenda in the long run right now sir china has made amendments to its anti-espionage law banning transfer of information relating to national security which has spooked foreign and domestic businesses what can you tell us of its impact the the impact will be profound we have seen now also how the the, the backfiring implications for china the exodus of top companies leaving china in terms uh, for greater you know uh, you know players around the region especially india and vietnam and other southeast asian countries so so uh, you know the elites in beijing realize that uh, uh, this will be a two-pronged you know approach in terms of uh, you know at first wanting to to limit the potential fallout impact of these sanctions and embargo put in place by the us and also the impact of its own retaliation hit for that response in terms of halting this uh, you know uh, momentum created by the west in terms of investments by Western companies in China, knowing that doing that, it will also cripple its own uh, uh, recovery momentum. So this new, new, uh, newly forged law of you know espionage laws targeting Western uh, entities and all that will, will have backfiring implications. Knowing that it's already been being stumped, being you know, stunted by this uh, slower than expected pandemic recovery uh, growth areas. Right. So this will also play into a bigger strategic playbook for the US in terms of capitalizing on this, seizing upon this platform and opening for them to really uh, seek new you know, uh, enhancement of strength in terms of capitalizing on this containment capacity with other Western players. He has done now with Japan and Netherlands in terms of the uh, chip ban to China. So this is a great opening also for Washington to reorient its strategy with regards to Beijing, uh, you know, beyond the coping and the risking approaches for now. Right, sir. That being said, on the global stage, how crucial would you say steady US-China relations are? And given the current situation, what do you think is the way forward and in what areas would you say cooperation between the United States and China would prove to be essential? Uh, the, the bilateral ties have been, you know, pillared upon um, mainly, primarily by strategic security calculations. We have seen how when push comes to show um, security calculations, national interests and geopolitical advantages have been the primary uh, pinnacle areas of importance for both countries. So Yellen's visit is uh, mainly being confined to economic trade and financial you know, uh, in relations between both countries. And there's this profound compelling expectations by other global players that both of them need to sit down and to have clear dialogue and frank discussions on how to reduce tensions and to move forward regardless of happenings at the security realm, at the security spectrum. So the economic ties will be the main drive, you know, the pinnacle of growth for not only for both countries, but for the entire, uh, you know, uh, the entire world. So, but um, eventually the overarching, you know, tensions, disputes, ranging from security disputes in Indo-Pacific, uh, in, even in continental US, we have seen how a lot of recent issues from Balloon Saga to the spy base in Cuba, and you know this this encompasses a whole range of um, uh, overarching security operations involving both uh, you know rivals that have not, that we have not seen since the end of Cold War. So I would say moving forward, ties will still be uh, you know determined by the importance of hard power calculations, uh, traditional security calculations by both countries, and any impact moving forward from reductions in terms of 
tariff or trade barriers or economic uh, cooperation moving forward with regards to issues regarding non-traditional spectrum, including climate change, uh, you know, resilient supply chain and all that right. will be secondary to the primary goal of maintaining national interest moving forward and to ensure that uh, you know one player or the other will stand supreme in the global arena of power parity and power calculations. Right. So that being said, just for more clarity on this, do you think any breakthrough, uh, breakthroughs or agreements are likely at the end of this visit by Janet Yellen? Uh, as I've argued, expectations are low. Um, we have seen how, you know, this is the embedded, the pent up, uh, you know, frustrations by both sides, but especially Beijing, uh, now that he has felt the full brunt of the uh, impact of the moves by the West, collective move by the West. Uh, so this, this, you know, uh, Yellen's visit has also been seen as another pandering by the U.S. to the demands of China. And now that we have seen subsequent consecutive visits by top U.S. officials within months and all initiated by the U.S. And this is seen also by some quarters as a sign of weakness of trying to appeal to China, saying that we are here uh, not to continue, not to decouple from you. And that, uh, you know, but for now, the momentum, the advantage, at least in parity terms, still belong to the US and the West. So whether you should continue using this approach or to reorient the whole orientation, see that uh, to send a message to Beijing that you can, you know, impose all these, you know, tit for tat responses in terms of embargo in critical resources, but they have still got the upper hand in terms of other areas and that, uh, you know, all the actions of the West trying to divide and conquer the collective Western capacity, whether in Europe, whether in, you know, others, uh, orbit areas, satellite states in 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 Indo Pacific or in Latin America, will still be met with you know you know strengthened and targeted and more focused approach by the whole uh, Western Hemisphere. So, um, moving forward, um, you know ties between these two powers will not only be determined by the uh, you know the overtures by the U.S. alone, and that uh, you know the, the 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 move by China to 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 halt this germanium and gallium exports. Just days before Yellen's visit is also meant as a message to the U.S. and other players that you know yes, this newfound uh, assertiveness and you know bold measures you know since uh, Xi, uh, President Xi's ascension as uh, during his third term to have this kind of new bold collective approach with regards to orientation of ties with the U.S. So now the ball is in Washington's court, and now that he has got the advantage of you know reset, resetting the whole ties, he has the full capacity to even decouple and deal with, of course. Uh, arguments have been made on the impact of both players, but um, as I've said, if push comes to show, Washington still has the advantage of using both options and that uh, to better enhance its power parity gap and dominance with China, vis vis China, Indo Pacific, and in the wider world. Right, so, sir. Right. Well, Mr. Collins Strong, thank you so much for joining us with all your inputs and insights on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.